Welcome to another Blender tutorial. Mm -hmm. Today we're going to be doing a quick update on the Blender game engine. Someone on the YouTube um, previous video commented that there's extra speed settings there. That's great. We're going to look at those today. Okay, so first of all, we're going to go Shift A. We're going to add an extra plane to the floor. We're going to drag it down, press S to scale it up. We're just going to go through it with Shift A as well and add an icosphere, that's the thing that's going to be rolling around and, um, and as we can see here, oh actually let's just get rid of that let's square all together, delete right, and someone asked me a question about um, you know, what's the difference between rigid body and dynamic settings in uh, the Blender Game Engine 2 um, let's quickly look at that right now, let's uh, undo the last few things there drag that across, we're going to turn it into Blender Game we're going to go through here and um, flip the game logic on too, just so we can see what we're doing. And if I press P right now, nothing happens because everybody here, if we look under the physics setting, are static. Okay, but if we go through and make it dynamic, press P, stuff happens. Excellent. Not very realistic. That's the dyna dynamic setting. Rigid body, P for play, much more realistic. The rigid body, the things actually um, interact with each other in a more realistic fashion. Sometimes you don't want that. You don't want them to interact in a realistic fashion. You just want them to just be there and do whatever you want it to and not roll around off people. Great. So rigid body is what we're working on today. It's going to make things slightly more complicated, but at least we um, we don't have the problem of um, of running into the problems later and encounter them there and go, hey, what's going on? Okay, so here we go. I have gone through, drag these things out here. I'm zooming in using my middle mouse button just so you can see what's going on here. Um, and we have the icosphere selected. Okay, I'm just going to press P to make sure it's not, yep, it's still above the ground. That's good. Add sensor. Just like before, we're going to add a keyboard sensor. We're going to add a and sensor, so in other words, I press it on the keyboard and something happens. The key I'm pressing, I just clicked in there, is going to be let's pick the um, right arrow. So I'm pressing the right arrow on the keyboard and um, drag it on. I can actually press my middle mouse button too and drag this back and forwards around. Roll my middle mouse button and zoom in and out on these guys as well. So I'm pressing the right arrow and I'm going to make motion. There it is. And left click and drag to join those up. Great. We've looked at these before, but we're going to quickly recap them right now anyway. Lock stands for location. Okay, your location on the screen. Okay. Rot stands for rotation. How far it's been rotated around. Uh, next one, force, torque, linear velocity, and angular velocity. We'll come back to those soon. Before we do that, we must understand that the, um, the game engine works in two ways. You can work in a, in a global way. Okay, global. Z, X, and Y. Z, X, and Y. At the moment, my widgets over here, uh, and this is the widget, the things I can drag the thing by, is set to be looking at the global um, coordinates. Okay, but it's not always the case. These are the global coordinates right there. Okay, Z is always pointing upwards, Y is always that way, and Z is always in those directions. Notice the global always matches the object right there. But if I go into local, what happens is if I go through and actually rotate my, my object around, like I have just then, now the, um, the coordinates of my object do not necessarily match the global coordinates. This is really good, for example, if you've got a car in your game engine and you go and turn your car around and you still want to press the forward mouse button but you don't want forward to any more mean the Y direction in the global settings. You want it to be the Y settings in the local settings, the local part of your thing. So you've turned your car around and you press the forward button and you want it now to go this way instead of just going purely that way. See these buttons right here? At the moment, they, these 
settings are all going to interfere with the local things. Like for example, right now, if I went through and did that, and I go through and press P for play up here, and I press my arrow, um, what's going on there? Oh, and it's moving in the, the X direction. Okay, because I put 0.3 in X there. So it's pushing it in that direction. Piece of play. Cool. Which is different from the X direction of the global settings. Watch this. Turn it off. Press piece of play. Press the arrow key. And now it's moving along the global axes only and not the local ones, local to that object. Okay. Let's go through, and I'm just going to go through and return all the back normal, pressing the Control Z key to undo. Right, next one. So, location. Changes the location of the object almost instantaneously. There's no speed up, there's nothing involved, it just goes, yes, the location changes when I press that key. Okay, press P for play, press the key, and yes, my object, as soon as I got the key held down, oops, fell off the edge, not a big deal. Escape to undo it, moves it along that way. Okay, let's get rid of that. Rotation. An instantaneous change. P for play. If I press the key, it will rotate it instantaneously along the X axis. What's the X axis? That line right through the middle. It's like a spike running right through the middle of that. Spins it around that. Spins it around the X axis. Okay, let's look at the important parts. Down here. Let's actually change all those away from local. And turn them into. Um, okay, that's better. Force. Going back to high school science. Force is acceleration. Well, actually, technically, force is mass times acceleration. We're getting a mass, an object, and we are making it go faster. Okay, we're accelerating it. Here, if I wanted to go through and add some acceleration, let's just put, um, let's say, one then basically this object here will accelerate at by increasing its speed by one something or other per second so pressing play the longer i hold the key down the faster the object will accelerate it will get faster and faster and faster and faster and faster you may be thinking why on earth is it rolling that's because we've got a rigid dynamic set on it's hitting the ground it's, it's only pushing it along this direction, but as it hits, it grinds against the ground and starts the ball rolling. If I just had a flat object, it wouldn't start rolling as I moved it, because it hit the flat surface and just start pushing along. Okay, that's force. I accelerated it in the X direction along the global axis. Okay, next one. Let's bring that back down to zero. Torque. What is torque? Well, torque is very similar to force, except it is an acceleration spinning around in a circle. Like a torque wrench, yeah, it's forcing things around in a circle. Okay, torque right here. Let's go through, increase the torque to that. Press P for play. I hit it, and it will start accelerating it around that X axis and it will continue to speed up and speed up and speed it up faster and faster and faster okay that's what forces do they accelerate objects cool next one linear velocity linear velocity is very very similar to that lock thing we saw before but what it does is it applies a certain amount of force to that object to bring it up to a speed let's say 3.5 and then it'll maintain it at that speed. So instead of being like an instantaneous change in location, it's a building up to that speed. I'll show you. P for play, hit the key. So see that? It exaggerated it, and then it's now adding enough force to keep it at that speed forever. It's like putting your foot in an accelerator to get yourself up to 100 k's per hour, and then it maintains it there. Okay, so it's not an instantaneous transition. Okay, same thing. Put the middle, press zero, enter. Same thing with angular velocity. We could change the angle, let's say four. It will apply a force to bring you up to that speed, and then it'll keep the force being applied 
to keep you at that that angular speed, that angular velocity. Okay, that's it. Hopefully that has made things clear to um, a few people out there. And I um, hope you have an excellent day. And we'll see you some other time.